got the Conde de Regla, if I pronounce that correctly, and the Conde de Tolosa. Oh, that is the lead of her class, I believe. That looks like one of the armoured cruisers. Now, I've just realised our battleships don't have torpedoes, so we're going to have to be a little bit more careful with how close we get. Oh, no. I'm quite happy with that, with the Invincible. Oh, no. And here we go. January 1903. The boffins at the Spanish Research Lab have finally figured out that we can make our battleships better. We can make them vaguely more accurate and vastly larger. Well, I lied. We cannot build dreadnoughts yet. That is super embarrassing. Uh, somebody in the uh, Spanish Navy is going to give me a good old wrapping on the wrist. Uh, now, we can build a small dreadnought, but the problem is we cannot do... 12-inch wing turrets. I believe the highest caliber we can we can just squeeze 11 11 inch guns in. But honestly, it's more designed for these 10 inches. And I don't know how well that's going to stand in the line of battle once we start getting bigger and more powerful. If we if we increase the beam a bit, make it a more of a shallow draft of beamier ship, I think we can. Oh, we can just just get away with 11 inches i mean i mean just though so we can put single 11s on there what if we drop the displacement down to what the lowest it can be more or less and kind of make this like a pocket battleship like this could be this could be good for the colonial holdings especially yeah, let's have a crack at doing this, and once we're building one of these, we'll upgrade our shipyard capacity. Yeah, alright, let's build this as a colonial battleship, the Invincible. I think that actually works. I, I was going to name our first Dreadnought the Espana, much like the actual um, Espana class, but I think we'll save that for our first proper Dreadnought. So we'll build the Invincible as a sort of colonial guard ship and that way we can retire a lot of those old pre-dreadnoughts and replace them with a couple of these actually that that's a really good way to go about it so 15,700 ton displacement 19.9 knots let's just put that up to 20 just to round it out you might be able to get it faster actually maximum bulkheads uh we'll go spacious for the crew now i believe we have multiple expansion engines yes we do That'll actually be worth it because it means we should be able to get away with only having one. Oh. Right. We can't get the really big funnels on this hull. That's uh, that's going to be problematic. Um, all right. So I guess we're going to have two funnels. And I guess if we go and juice, that gives us up to 152% capacity. So if we get rid of one... Uh, now, what's our smoke interference looking like? 31.9. I mean, that's not ideal, but I mean, it's 76% engine efficiency. We'll see how we go. Uh, now, we can get crop armor, anti-torp. Like, these are still going to be pretty expensive ships. So, I think it's worth investing in all the protection schemes possible. So that we can keep these things going for as long as possible. Also, being colonial ships, they they need to sort of be able to tough it out on their own a bit more. Because they're not going to be big fleets. They're not going to be in home waters with big, spacious dry docks available. So these things need to be fairly survivable, survivable in the sense that they, they need to be able to essentially repair themselves at smaller ports. So we'll leave that as it is. Uh, oh my goodness, the bridge towers are gigantic for this. Um, yep, yeah, alright, so that should be fine for that one. That's uh, that's getting... Oh, hang on, the secondary tower... Honestly, I don't think we can justify the cost of going from 535 to 695 if it's only plus 10 aiming speed and uh, an additional plus 1 accuracy. I think we'll just have it do that. Alright, so that's looking okay. Now, uh, stereoscopic rangefinder, which is the one I always go for. Now, I believe the... I believe the main belt armor of the Espana class was nowhere near 12 inches. We might... Uh, let's go 11.5, 4.24, 4.2 aft, uh, maybe 2.5 on the main deck. It is crops, so it's giving us a plus 70%, 78% uh, armor rating. 
and we are going to be running 11 inches on this ship. So, side guns. Can we get away with twins? Oof. Just. We can just get away with twins. So this is essentially becoming a baby dreadnought. The problem is, it is now overweight. Considerably overweight. Which means we're going to have to decide what we want to focus more on. Firepower, armor, or speed. One thing we definitely need is more range. Which, on its own, is going to bring the weight up. But the more range the better, because it's going to be guarding colonial assets. It's going to have to move around a bit. Now, if we take the main belt down to 10 inches, that is going to save us some weight. A considerable amount of weight, actually. Uh, we are going to bring the superstructure up to 1 inch, though. Now, the penetration of these, uh, armor piercing, we're going to go with capped, because we want the maximum penetration as possible, and we're going to go with... Yeah, we're going to go with the soft cap as well. I tend to go with soft cap on the HE because I like to get a little bit more penetration with the HE. Because sometimes I can do a decent amount of damage on your on your lighter ships, like your um, cruisers and destroyers. Now, we're still overweight by over a thousand tons, which is not good. And we haven't even added a barbette protection yet. So now we're overweight by more than a thousand tons. So, how much of a difference does spacious to standard crew make? few hundred tons but at the same time we want our crew to be relatively well accommodated so that we don't suffer from crew casualties as much uh, we haven't even put the this uh, the tertiary battery on this thing doesn't have a secondary battery uh, but it is going to have a tertiary battery just to deal with the uh, destroyers and torpedo boats that come our way so that's upping our weight even more okay we'll have to go back to steam steering uh, we could go for Balasite, but I'm honestly going to stick with the uh, White Powder. Now, we can consider the weight savings if we drop down to 10-inch guns. But that is going to result in a significant drop in firepower in terms of raw penetration. So, at the moment it's 17,000 tons with 11 inches. Okay, so that does save a significant amount of weight. The drawback is, of course, you're running 10-inch guns. Now, we can offset that a little bit by the fact that we're going to have an increased fire rate. And this is, after all, just going to be a colonial defense battleship. So we, it isn't going to be going into big fights as much as we can help it. it. It's going to be there to kind of hold the line until we can send a big battle fleet out from home waters. So we might be able to get away with that. It isn't going to have the firepower of the fleet of ocean class. But the fleet of ocean classes are home water, top of the line battleship right now. And it does only have 11 inch guns. So we're only losing an, a, a one inch of caliber. And we're going to be getting a faster battleship with more advanced technology that ultimately is going to be used more of a more as a secondary ship anyway. So I think we can get away with that. And with that in mind, I think if we lose the anti-torpedo blister, uh, the anti-torpedo belt blister things, and if we... I really don't want to lose the anti-flood as well, because flooding is a flooding is a problem when you're running battleships. Do I sacrifice even more range? I think I think we're just going to have to sacrifice a bit of range, and that actually frees us that actually frees us up some space where we might be able to stick the anti-torpedo defenses back on. Yeah. Okay. So. I'm quite happy with that, with the Invincible, ironically named as a sort of pocket colonial defense battleship armed with twin 10-inch guns. That will be a good intermediary ship until we can upgrade the shipyard and build some proper dreadnoughts. Uh, it is going to be... Cons oh, it's actually cheaper than the Fleet of Oceans class. It's uh, 32 million. I thought it was more expensive, but it's not. Okay. Can we squeeze any secondaries on this? Not really. I honestly don't think it's worth it. Let's just save this as it is. 15, 15 and a half thousand tons. Invincible class. Okay. Now, how is our shipyard capacity looking? So we're not building anything right now. So I reckon we build we, we build two of these to start with. We might make it a class of four. four. Right, so we'll have two Invincibles on the Caribbean station. 
two on the... We might have just one on the Caribbean station, actually. Two in Southeast Asia. And that'll free up between another four to another six-ish battleship slots for home waters. Because I don't think we can really afford to go above 10 or 12 battleships at most unless our economy really starts to boom. So we'll build two of these to begin with. Now, I don't think we can set their ports. Oh, we can. Okay, so we can set them to be done at... Okay, so that will go to Santiago de Cuba, because it's got the space. And, okay, East Philippines will have to go to Davao, because I believe Manila is completely full right now. Yes, that's right, because it's got the other battle fleet. In fact, we might as well send that get that fleet out as well to continue harrying the chinese fleets we keep getting these uh undefended port missions but we're never sinking transports i think i think that's a bit of a thing it's just saying draw all the time i'm gonna have to report that as a bug i think oh and the united states and the italians have gone to war uh which means we're losing more rep against them again but we are getting friendly with the Italians. Oh, we've got another transport beat down. Again, nothing sunk. Oh, and we have a clash of the fleets. Interesting. So, oh, a couple of torpedo boats and a bunch of heavy cruisers versus two battleships, a heavy cruiser and a light cruiser. Oh, I think, yeah. I mean, it's going to be a bit of a cakewalk, but I'll take it. You know, one thing I really wish they would make is this, but for the Age of Sail. I know there's Ultimate and Roll Age of Sail, but you don't get to, like, build your own ships or do, like, a big campaign map. I, I just want to relive the Aubrey Maturin books, but, like, the, the battles and stuff just in, in this. Alright, we're opening up. Alright, so their entire fleet is now visible. So we've got one... Two, three. Okay, so that's probably the line of the heavy cruisers. Okay, we're gonna have to take mana control of the Vlad de Lazo because that's gonna. Oh, he's gonna. He's gonna take a torpedo hit. Not good. Not good. Not good. Not good. Not good. Turn faster, you raging Spaniard. Oh. Oh, we got one of the torpedo boats. Yes, excellent. Okay. <gasps> no. Oh, that's a disaster. Oh god, if he doesn't get out of the way, he's gonna take another hit. Oh, the Conde de Tolosa has taken a big hit. Look at her, she's listing hard. Now, is our light cruiser going to be getting within torpedo range? I don't know. Ooh, torpedo detonation. Oh, I think he's sinking. Yep, he's sunk. All right, perfect. Oh, no. Oh, no. Please be a dud. Nope. <laughs> it was not a dud. Okay, so in this match, the torpedo is definitely working. Oh, no. Oh, that was so close. Now, this is probably your first time watching me play Ultimate Admiral, as I've never posted this before, but as you probably already figured out, I go for fairly aggressive fleet tactics. My style changes as the technology goes along, though. And obviously, I know all of the, the things about best way to improve accuracy, RE, pitch, roll, smoke interference, etc. But in these early, early decades of the campaign, you really just got to get stuck in there. Oh, and that was a solid hit on the He Yuan. So I think all three of their heavy crews... Oh, no, one of them is still in tip-top shape. But two of them have now got heavy damage. Oh, that guy is fully flooding out, actually. That one might just sink straight away from flooding. Yeah, I think it's going to sink. Yep, there we go. Okay. Okay. Okay, so it looks like the remaining Chinese heavy cruisers are trying to break from the engagement, and I'm honestly going to let them, because we have sunk their torpedo boats, we have sunk two of the heavy cruisers. One has got some damage, one's got no damage, and we've got a heavily damaged battleship that we're going to have to repair, and a fairly heavily damaged uh, cruiser as well, or moderately damaged, I would say. So I think this is a good time to break the, break the engagement as well. Maybe we might get a lucky shot, but I, I reckon overall it says they've done more damage, but that was from torpedo hits. 
we, we've sunk more tonnage. So I'm pretty certain this will be a tactical victory for the Spanish fleet. And yep, that is a 100% a Spanish victory, because uh, we didn't lose any ships. Uh, we took some heavy damage, although it reckons that it's not damaged at all, which I find interesting. And uh, we sank four of theirs, so that is 4,000 victory points versus 129. So, okay, so they've only got two battleships. They still have 11 heavy cruisers so we sank two so we took them down from 13 to 11 which is a not insignificant difference uh wow japan has got nothing going on they've only got heavy and light cruisers same with uh, the soviet union okay so they're both going through a scrapping regime clearly we've only got 61 now i'm getting a little bit worried with our fleet size because well <laughs> the, the british are doing what they do best admittedly they have, still have a lot of torpedo boats but they've got 16 battleships, 34 heavy cruisers. France has got 31 battleships, and they don't like us, which is a little bit worrying. America has 13 battleships, they don't like us. Um, but they are at war with the Italians at the moment. So, the only, the only nation that particularly likes us is Japan. Now, originally, my big brain move was to go to was to go to war against Britain and do Spanish Armada 2 Electric Boogaloo. But I'm actually going to try and make Britain my friends um, and uh, together we can maybe try and bully France. Who knows? We'll see. All right. So we have got another meeting and this time we've got the Pembroke class battleships against a another big squadron of uh, Chinese vessels, all heavy no, they've got a light cruiser in there as well, but uh, they've got more torpedo boats, which is a bit worrying. Uh, now, are any of these the ones we encountered last time? No, these are all new. We've only got green. Oh, we've got a couple of veterans in there, but they're mostly green versus trained. So, this is going to be interesting. We're heavily outnumbered. We're going to have to play this fight quite conservatively. And the battleships are already opening up with their big 11.9 inch guns. So the Pembroke class are more heavily armed. They've got a 11.9 inch battery, so four 11.9 inch guns, and they've got a mix of six and four inch as their secondary and tertiary batteries. So they are opening fire rather sillily on the torpedo boats, which are the closer threats. Uh, that thing is not even moving. It looks like uh, one of the torpedo boats is going to be making an attempt. Now the Pembrokes are also slightly more maneuverable. So hopefully, if a torpedo comes our way, we're not going to have uh, the same sort of trouble that we had last time. Okay, we're going to get the battle line to begin engaging these heavy cruisers. Now, these heavy cruisers have got torpedoes, but it's okay because this time we have torpedoes as well. Yep, they've got their top off first. Oh, no, they're going to hit the Alerta. Oh, no, it might miss, it might miss. Yeah, we are all good. All right, we need to get those light cruisers out of there right now because they are danger close. Oh, and we got a fantastic hit with the torpedo, though. Brilliant. The Neptuno is getting focus fired. Ah, oh, we lost the Alerta. Damn. Light cruisers out of there. Oh, they are firing a lot of torpedoes. You two, just, just go. Just flee. Hopefully the battleships can uh, deal with some of this. Oh no, they're going to hit the San Martin. Oh, that was a that was a nasty torpedo hit right on the rear. Oh no. Oh no, that's going to be the end of it. All right, you need to run. You you two just need to run. We were too aggressive for too long. Now we're paying the ultimate price. They reversed us on tonnage sunk. We're going to lose the Sin Matan. Yep. Oh, now they're sending the torpedo boats in. That is unideal. Oh, that torpedo boat just took a very nasty hit. Might even be enough to sink it, actually. All right, now that you're there, we'll turn you around. Yep, they've lost another torpedo boat. Fantastic. Oh, we're getting in torpedo range of the torpedo boats. Not good, not good, not good. Focus everything on the torpedo boat for the love of Santa Maria. Go, battleship torpedoes. Go. Go. Oh, this poor torpedo boat. Oh. Oh, dear.
idea. He that would have hit the heavy that would have hit the heavy cruiser, I think, but the torpedo boat was like, get down, Mr. President, and just saved it. Alright, we're gonna kite the enemy fleet. See if we can get some lucky long Oh no! What was that? Was that a torpedo hit? I didn't see a torpedo in the water. Oh, the problem is now they've uh, they've got weight of numbers and they are running us down. Oh, we just got a really good hit on the heavy cruiser Zilly. I think that one's going to sink. Which is good considering we've taken uh, de engine damage. Oh, no. Quick, 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 quick. Get ahead of that torpedo. Nope, that is going to hurt. Oof. Please don't cause a flash fire, I beg of you. Yeah, I think we're going to have to disengage. I think they've got us on just pure weight of numbers now. I don't know how this is going to go as a victory or a defeat or a draw. I think the game's probably going to rule this as a defeat for the Spanish Navy. So we're going to send the Neptuno in to see if we can bail out the poor Aquile. Oh my god, look at the damage stacking up on the Aquile. I think they might, I think they might surrender purely from... Uh, crew losses at this point if we're not careful. Come on, please get your torpedo out. All right, yeah, get your torpedo out. Oh my goodness. Okay, that was a sacrificial lamb. I think that torpedo's gonna hit. Yep, it did. All right, that's gonna force that heavy cruiser to disengage, although I think we're gonna lose the Neptuno because of that. Neptuno, please forgive me. Man, these, uh, these, these light cruisers are not, uh, handling this particularly well although I think the torpedo hit is actually going to sink the hexi well all she's now doing is acting as a giant distraction so that the battleships can limp away well sail away as fast as possible really oh Neptuno your sacrifice will not be forgotten oh no there she goes right wow okay that was a complete defeat we are fleeing the battle with our tail between our legs Oh, the Hexy's still in full chase. I think she's got a bit of a score to settle after taking the Neptuno's torpedo. My goodness, this is the longest retreat in history. They are just on our tail. And the poor Aquile is just slowly suffering a death by a thousand cuts. Okay, the Chinese fleet has actually split up in this chase now, so we might be able to deal with this situation. Yangwei is still in pursuit of the Aquile, and there's also the Rijiao. So I'm getting the Pembroke to come over to the Aquile and re-engage. Well, we're getting dangerously close to being in torpedo range, though. Oh, no. We took flooding damage. And we finally got a good flooding hit. Oh, that's going to... Please give us a flash fire. Oh, no, it has flooded the engine room, though. Okay, that is good. That was the lucky break that we needed. Oh, they might sink. They might sink. Yes, the Yangwei sinks. Oh, my goodness, my battleships are about to have a slight bonk. No, nope, we're good. Oh, they didn't touch. Settle petal. All right, so we did end up dealing with the Yangwei. Their captain got cocky and thought he had the best of the of the battleships. Now we're going to turn around and deal with the Rijiao. Because it looks like they don't have backup. I think the rest of the Chinese fleet dishing, disengaged and left this poor little light cruiser on its own. Although I think it's realized its error. And we finally scored what appears to be a fatal hit. There we go. And we can end the battle finally. That was a long, drawn-out affair, but it was a, fi a victory. But I would almost call that a Pyrrhic victory because, yeah, our two battleships survived, but we lost the heavy cruiser and our three light cruisers. But in terms of pure tonnage, that was a win. But I think that is also an indication that perhaps it is finally time to modernize 
the cruisers in our navy because they don't seem to be able to stand up to prolonged combat anymore and I'm pretty certain what the Chinese fleet is fielding is more modern than the cruiser force that we currently have. So it is time to design some new cruisers. Oh, and uh, China wants to sign a peace treaty. You know what? No, we're gonna we're gonna fight to the end uh, because I want to design some cruisers. <laughs> that is my only reason for continuing. I, I want the money that I'm getting from the war effort to justify it. Oh, even though we wanted to continue the war, peace has broken out between Spain and China in September of 1903. Uh, because we're going to be very broke and because we can't claim any territory, we're just going to take the uh, reparations. So we are at peace once again. Uh, we haven't designed any of those cruisers yet because I was waiting for some research to be finished up here before we upgrade our light fleet. Uh, China and uh, France are still at war, interestingly enough. And they're also at war with Germany, but uh, they decided to sign a peace with us, even though we didn't want to, but hey. Uh, we might soon find ourselves at war with the United States, which is a bit of a bigger problem. Which is why I am glad that we have the first of our baby battleships building. And in fact, do we have the... No, oh, we don't have the shipbuilding capacity yet because I think we're repairing a heap. But once those battleships are done repairing, we're going to build another one of our 10 inches to go out to Santiago to Cuba, I think, because it sounds like things are going to heat up with the Americans pretty soon. And we might need to send our Atlantic fleet out, although they don't have particularly good range, so we'll need to get them out there um, and hope that we don't get, get engaged along the way when we run out of fuel. Okay, we are at that wonderful point in the world again when we are going to go broke very quickly if we don't uh, trim some of the fat. Um, oh, we apparently seem to the... Um, we seem to be invading Mauritania. I had no knowledge of this, and I don't think we had a pop-up for that, but hopefully uh, we, we take it. Uh, that's news to me. That'll, that'll help with the economy. Now, I will say that a chunk of our deficit is coming from the fact that we're currently upgrading our shipyards. We're not even halfway through doing it yet. So, yeah, that is a bit of a problem. That's costing us 13 million. The... Fleet is costing us, fleet building is costing us 6 million, fleet maintenance is costing us 30. Okay, so we've dropped down a little bit more to negative 28.9 million, but that budget still looks very sad. We basically need to halve our fleet size. The Infanta Maria Teresa's, they are 1893 circa, so they're still not particularly very good. But we haven't done a refit on them yet. So, maybe we refit... How many of these do we have? Okay, so we've only got three of those as opposed to, I think, nine of the Purification class. So, and those are costing us, you know, 300,000-ish each. And the Infanta Maria's are costing us half a million each. So, I think it might be a case of slowly retiring the very old ones. And we'll refit the Infantas quickly now, just to see how we can upgrade them. So they've got the old Nickel Steel Armor, Barbet 1, Triple Expansion Steam Engines, Brown Propellant, Gun Cotton, Nose Fuse, Standard AP. Yeah, okay, we can refit these and make them a bit better. So we'll give them the Krupp Armor to begin with, because I think that made a pretty... Yeah, that made a huge difference to the weight, as it was. Multiple, multiple Expansion. Can we get a better funnel? Okay, so we can only fit the one big funnel. Okay, that is unfortunate. Actually, what's our smoke interference like? Okay, so with natural boilers, it's 20 smoke interference. And with induced, it only goes up to 23, but it doubles our engine efficiency. I think that is a price worth paying. Now, we're running 9.2 inch twin main guns. I think they can stay. Uh, we will switch to white powder... And gun cotton, stereoscopic rangefinder to slightly boost the accuracy a wee bit. Mark 3, 9.2 inches. Yep, we are up to that. Now, these things could, considering we're still fighting at fairly close range, and now we've got 1.5 kilometer range on the torpedoes, I think it's worth having a couple of these torpedo tubes amidships. Uh, we can go up to 17 inch. 
for a 30% damage increase, but with a slight increase in dud chance, I think we'll take that. Uh, we'll go with the anti-flood and the double hull. Make them more survivable. Uh, now, can we afford to sit any secondaries on here anywhere? No. That's got better armor protection now. Slightly better secondary guns, I believe. Better anti-flood. Better propellants. Uh, what have we got for the standard? Okay, yeah, we'll leave that at standard. Uh, we'll go base fuse. Hydraulic turret, steam, steering. Uh, I won't worry about the auxiliary engines on this one. And I think that's a pretty good refit. It'll it'll give it maybe an extra couple of years of longevity. The these are going to become obsolete pretty quickly, I think. But it'll 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 extend their life. Yep. So they're refitting. That'll take three months. And I think it is now worth looking at our light cruisers because we've got the Blancas, which are all mothballed. I want to get rid of those and. The Infanta Isabels are from 1893. So yeah, everything's a decade old now. It's 1904. So let us build a light cruiser. So the best hull we have... Okay, we're still in the old school light cruiser hulls. That's fine. So this will be the Extra Madura. Extra Madura? I don't know. Um, 23 knots is the optimum speed. We'll stick with that. Now, I want the light cruisers to be able to... Uh, tank a bit more so I think we're actually gonna leave it at the maximum displacement maximum bulkheads leave the range as it is and we're gonna stick some stuff on it and then we're gonna go for a slightly more valuable light cruiser uh, for the home fleet and then we might do a slightly more throwaway light cruiser for the foreign stations I think six inch guns is gonna be a bit too much for them honestly I think we're gonna go with five point I think the Spanish used 5.2 or 5 inch I think it was 5.2 so let's update that armament to 5.2 inch couple four couple aft uh, now secondaries we're gonna go with just the the old old reliable two inch oh my goodness they don't actually properly fit on there that's unfortunate Okay, I guess we're mostly going to stick with the uh, two-inch casements then. So, we can't go for as much of a beefy light cruiser as I was hoping, as it turned out, because we still don't have all the tech that I really want yet. Uh, we've got a horrible four-weight offset though, so we need to uh, do something about that. I could stick a little barbette on the end though. Instead of having it like that, it's that still, yeah, that hasn't done anything to the four weight offset there, because of course, because everything's still the same. I could put the front tower down there, but that is going to cause issue. Uh, we might just have to deal with a, uh, okay, getting rid of one of those torpedoes helped. Oh, uh, if we just chucked a couple of little two inch secondaries down there, was that help a little bit? Oh, that helps a little bit. So we got a bit of a little gun battery setup going on back here. Now I wonder if we can really cheese the barbette here. Oh we can, okay. So we can make this into a bit of a a gun cruiser I guess. Is that going to add to the full weight a bit? It is, but honestly that is a... It, it looks cheesy and cursed as heck, but I kind of just want the light cruisers to have a little bit more firepower. I mean, they're going to be, they're going to have no accuracy anyway. So the more guns you have, the more chances there are they are you're going to hit something. And honestly, mine laying might not be a bad idea in the grand scheme of things. Okay, right. Now that we've done that, we need to see how expensive this is going to get. Because I think we'll just go barbet one. We'll go double hull, bulkheads, citadel. And we're going to go with three inches of main belt, 1.5 inch fore and aft, and 0.5 on the fore and aft deck. Superstructure is going to have 0.5 inches. Conning tower is going to be 4.5 inches, I think. Oh, no, let's make it. Let's make the conning tower a bit thicker, like 5.5 inches. And have a little bit of a citadel protecting it, because we've got a lot of guns. So I think stuff protecting the magazines in that under underneath the uh, the waterline and everything, where they're going to be keeping all of these 5.2 inch shells is probably a good idea. Yeah, okay. So we've still got a fair amount of weight to play with, but I really don't want the cost to go much higher. What does the anti-flood do to the weight and the cost? 
Uh, honestly, doesn't make much odds. Ah, let's uh, up the let's up the range. Yeah, there we go. So we can get maximum range on the extra Madura. Yeah, okay, I like that. 90, 95%, 8.4 million. Um, how much is it compared to the Velasco? So it's 5.8 uh, .8 going up to 8.4 million. So it's a fairly big jump in cost, but I think it's going to be a lot more capable. We are losing the um, the seven inch guns, but this thing is going to be just a shotgun of a of a light cruiser. Like this isn't the only thing this is going to be used for. Really, is potentially taking on other light cruisers, but I'm mostly thinking about this for the hordes of destroyers and torpedo boats that you tend to find at this tier still because a lot of the other na nations will keep using their torpedo boats until like the late 1910 sometimes so it's, it's worth keeping something like this so i'm happy with that we'll save that and we'll have a quick look and see if we can do a better armored cruiser i don't think we can yet oh that is an older the infanta maria i think that is an older hull yeah it's the armored cruiser one hull so we've got a, a better armored cruiser hull, but, and that is a big but, we only have, oh, we might be able to fit two funnels in? Okay, we can fit two funnels in straight off the bat. All right, let's have a go at making a new armored cruiser as well. Optimal hull speed, we'll make it 22 knots, because I reckon we can probably get away with going a bit more. Spacious crew. Uh, we won't worry about anti-top, we'll go double hull, bulkheads, anti-flood, and citadel. Uh, now, the Infanta has 9.2 inches, so I'm thinking we're going to make this one pack a lot more punch and stick 11 inches on the uh, Cristobal Colo. That is a, a very spicy looking thing, but I'm wondering how quickly we're going to chew through the weight of this design. Uh, yeah, that is potentially going to be a problem. Uh, we're going to go with uh, two inch casements up here and then four inch casements on the bottom. Okay, 87% weight. Do we have any space for any torpedo tubes? Yeah, we'll take the midships ones again. This is probably going to be one of the last things that has built in torpedo tubes because they eventually just become more of a, a hindrance than anything else. Okay, we're going to go with capped armor piercing shells. Okay, so main belt. We're going to be punching way above our weight in terms of gun to armor. But I'm thinking... So the Infanta Maria had 0.5 to 5.1 inch. So I'm thinking maybe we can get away with 5.5 inch on the main. 2.2 inch, maybe four and a half. Oh no, let's make it 2.8 inch. Just throwing arbitrary numbers out there. 1.5 inch main deck. And honestly, one inch. we're going to make this thing fairly tanky. Because again, it's still going to be going into battles where you're basically at shotgun range half the time. Uh, oh, top of the turrets could do with a bit more armor. There we go. Okay, so we're already at 95% of our total weight. White powder plus gun cotton is fine enough. That is almost a, in terms of like potential firepower, it's getting close to almost being a pre-dreadnought because you've got 11 inch guns. But if you can get this thing up close and personal with light cruisers, that is gonna cause a lot of damage. And in fact, the bigger casements, we're just gonna go with the largest caliber we can, which is five inches. And I think uh, for a one of our last armored cruisers, the Cristobal Colon is looking pretty good. Okay, so if we up the range anymore, that is where we start entering problems when it comes to max displacement. That is, oh, I did want it to have a bit more range. Okay, if we change the four deck to 2.6, ah, uh, sorry, four bell. Okay, so we're only a little bit over. There we go. Okay, so we are right riding the maximum capacity, but 9,000 ton heavy cruiser I'm quite happy with that. How old is the previous destroyer? Yeah, you see, we can we can improve um, we can improve the destroyer class as well with the Guantanamos. I reckon we can squeeze this out to 34 knots. Actually, we're gonna really lean into the engines if we can. Oh yeah, that's even better. We might be able to squeeze this up to 35 knots. 
35.5. Yep, I don't want to get it to... It's going to get prohibitively expensive if we try and make it any faster than that, but that's pretty good. We're actually going to do all the anti-flood stuff because having the destroyer able to tank a couple of hits does help, although I think we uh, might exceed our weight if we're not careful. Yeah, we're already going over weight. That is going to be a problem. Okay, so if we drop the speed back to 34.5, that takes us to 106% overweight. Our aft weight is appalling. Actually, this is going to add even more weight, but if we can do this, this is going to be a very light on guns, heavy on torpedoes destroyer. Hmm, I think, I think going for this many torpedo tubes might be asking for trouble. Oh yeah, they're 41 tons each. Um, okay, that's a bit better, I guess. What's their range? Are they much of an upgrade? So they're 1.5 kilometers. So we're not getting massive upgrades yet, are we? We are, however, going to up the armor. And I know that's going to bring back some of that weight. Now we've only got three guns, which isn't a lot. What are the weight differences between the main guns? Because that's currently running four inches. Mm, no, I don't really want to drop it down to three inch guns because that would be too weak. Okay, so we reduced a bit of the armor on the fore and the aft belt. Main belt was still one inch because we want it to have a little bit of protection. Okay, losing the rangefinder makes almost no difference. Ah, switching to gun cotton, of course. Silly. Silly boy. All right. Um, we can go with standard base fuse soft cap. Okay, that actually adds to the weight. Of course it does. All right, so the Guantanamo is exactly a 1,000 ton destroyer with four 17 inch torpedo tubes. Yes, with a 1.5 kilometer range and three four inch guns. Not the most heavily armed destroyer out there, but this is more of a torpedo orientated destroyer for this year. Now, with those three designs done at 1904, we will get some of them building to slowly replace what we have on the fleet. So almost all of our destroyers are around Spain. So we've got 16 destroyers we need to gradually replace. Okay, so we've got eight of those destroyers building, four for Barcelona, another four for La Coronia, because that is where the other main fleet is currently based. Once they start coming online, we'll begin scrapping slash refitting some of the older destroyers as we see fit. I believe, in terms of age... The, yeah, the, the Dueros are the first destroyers that we've built, so that's only the second destroyer class. Um, double the torpedo firepower, but also double, or, well, not double the cost, but an extra third in cost. Now we're also going to build four of the extra Maduras to go into Barcelona as well, to replace some of the Blancas that are going to get um, removed from the fleet. And we're also going to build a pair of the Cristobal Colons to go into Barcelona as well. So we're going to be upgrading the fleet at Barcelona in the Mediterranean before we update anything else. Good lord, they're taking 19 months to build. They're going to be obsolete by the time they're in the water. Hey, and uh, we got uh, Mauritania, which is fantastic. So that's uh, even more territory for the ever-growing Spanish Empire. Man, we've got a bit of a, an, an African holding going on here now. Western Sahara... Mauritania and Morocco. Fantastic. And that's gonna that's gonna help with the money situation. Although we are now down to negative 41. What is dragging that down? Oh, the fleet refit and the fleet building is not helping, because of course, yeah, we're building a billion things. Oh, and we are over shipyard capacity because I agreed to build some stuff for other nations. Whoops. Hmm. Now the United States wants to go to war with us, but I personally don't think we're ready. I don't know if we can afford to take the financial hit, though. That's the problem. No, I think I'm going to take the financial hit and not go to war with America quite yet, although I think that is going to be inevitable. Uh, what's their fleet looking like? Pretty strong. Actually, we probably could have gotten away with going to war with them. That's right. We will. Um, that'll buy us a few more months, and we will just keep increasing... <laughs> we'll just go back to increasing tension. I, I should have just agreed to the war. That was a that was a silly decision. All right, just in the nick of time, two of our baby dreadnoughts have finished building. So one in Davao, one in Santiago de Cuba, which means 
in Santiago de Cuba, we can now look at losing one of the battleships. So we've got the San Miguel there, which we can... Yeah, that's one of the older ones on anyway, the Conde de Tolosa classes. So we can honestly... I might mothball her. No, actually, no, we're just going to straight up scrap her. And we also have... Is Deval overtunned? Oh my goodness, Deval is very overtunned. Honestly, I think an Invincible class battleship is worth two of the Conde de, de Tolosas, so I think we can honestly just retire the entire the entire class, pretty much. Uh, is that a bit of a gamble? Yeah, but these are desperate times and we are running out of money. So the Conde de Tolosa class is being retired and scrapped. Uh, there is only one left, which is in Havana. Um, where are you, Havana? There you are. Oh wow, that's still overtunned. Uh, okay, I guess we're going to move a couple of the light cruisers into Guantanamo Bay. Uh, we might leave the last of those battleships uh, in the Caribbean because we are going to be going to war potentially with the United States very soon. Yeah, we're already back to negative 93 tension. So that might be worth. So those will be commissioned in two months. And the Santisima Trinidad, which I, I, I left the name. I was going to, I was going to, think about renaming that specific one but that's going to arrive in Cadiz we are we've got nine months of funds left so I'm really hoping that the shipyard building program finishes soon oh hello uh the United States wants to go to war um I, I honestly don't think we have a choice yep we're at war with America oh boy that is uh that is a meme okay so we, we, my goodness, we, we've gone from an era of peace with the fleet of oceans running the Spanish Navy to the first tea lord being an absolute warmonger. Like we, we've been at war with the Austrians, we've been at war with the Chinese, and now we're going to war with the Americans. We've won the previous two, but can we, can we hoe down with the Americans with their fleet of 86 ships, 11 battleships, nine heavy cruisers, 34 light cruisers, 10 destroyers, 12 torpedo boats, and we might also be going to war with the Austro-Hungarians again if things don't improve, and maybe even the French, which isn't ideal. We now have to deal with something that we haven't really encountered before, and that is possibly the Americans sinking a lot of our transports, which is, isn't really an issue we faced with the Chinese, and I didn't really see it much with the Austro-Hungarians. But when you're dealing with the Americans, or with the British I find, if you're dealing with the Atlantic, there are a lot of transport losses you sometimes have to factor in. But at least we're getting money again, which is a good thing. And yep, our ship, our shipyard expansion program has finished. So what we will do now is we will begin our full Dreadnought program. But that will be something we will begin in the next episode of this series, because I probably think so far we've already come up to maybe doing this for a full hour after clipping and editing and all that fun stuff. Will Spain be able to produce a decent, powerful, fast, and effective dreadnought that doesn't break the bank? Will we be able to beat the Americans at naval combat and not lose? And will I go insane before my tenure as first T-Lord is complete, uh, particularly with the way the torpedo has been behaving? Who knows? We will find out next time in this Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought series, but hopefully everyone enjoyed this slight change of pace, and there will be some other content coming on this channel in the near future, along with um, some videos probably from Brother Munro when he, where he will uh, tear my design philosophy apart, so stay tuned for that. But until then, we will be back next time for some more boat action.